Okay. Hello. Welcome everyone to Hope Sparks, where I zero in on inspiring people working in education innovation. Today, I am so pumped to introduce you to the captivating Jennifer Johnson and Jan Frolic from Captains and Poets. We're going to learn about that name shortly. After learning about their important work, I've been so excited to introduce you to them. And before I let them share directly, I want to share a little bit about these two incredible friends, parents and co-founders in the education space. I'll start with you, Jennifer. As a passionate and courageous entrepreneur, Jennifer also has an MA in education and curriculum. Teaching and organizational learning has and has been a curriculum writer and designed and implemented numerous transformational programs over the span of her career. You've got some serious chops, Jennifer. <laughs> and I would also say you're on a mission to empower young people to be their best. And over to Jan, who I would say is the quirky, straight-talking connector with deep experience as an entrepreneur and corporate leader in the diversity and inclusion space with a focus on gender equity. She's an honors BA in sociology and is committed advocate and continual student in anti-racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Jan is passionate about building kids who will champion others. So we've got two hostesses. I would love for us to start out with, what is Captains and Poets? Why? Why did you start this company? Who wants to take that one? Ah, uh, well, uh, I'll take that one, right? And I'll give you a little bit of background of, of where I came from um, and why the idea sort of started percolating and, and when. So about about five years ago, actually, I was working, I spent the last decade in the uh, gender diversity space um, and working for um, equity for women in the workplace. And what I recognized was that nothing was going to change like forever. And I thought perhaps maybe we needed to start having inclusion conversations with young people really early, um, like much earlier than what we have been doing up until this point. And I was introduced to Jennifer um, through a colleague and we just, there was like sparks. It was like this moment of, yeah, we are on the same page and we need to do something about this. And so that was, that was the beginning for me. And of course, Jennifer brought this whole slew of skills and brilliance to to the our, our team and that's how we ended up creating captains and poets that is yeah i can definitely see your synergies and your connection as soon as you hop on any meeting or call with the two of these ladies you can tell um they are definitely connected so jennifer could you tell everyone who's listening what is captains and poets it's such a cool name tell us what it is and, and what it is that you do in this organization? So Captains and Poets is a kindergarten to grade 12 program that is aligned to the provincial curriculum and is, is used in home and school environments. And really the purpose of this program is to give young people today an inner compass, to really connect with who they are, to understand who they are, and to give them the ability to access key parts of themselves in any given moment. So what we're really doing is enhancing self-awareness and empowering young people with self-leadership skills so that they are um, conscious and, and forging a path forward and really understanding how they're showing up in the world and how they want to contribute to the world around them. Um, and really that self-leadership is the foundation of effective leadership skills as well. So we're running a lot of leadership programs for youth um, with the fundamental premise being that everyone is a leader and to be the best leader you can be, you just need to show up as your authentic self. Wow, I'm hearing some definite words that ring true uh, working with grown-ups, having leadership skills, self-awareness, um, connection to others. You guys are working uh, with younger people to help set them up for life, right? That is yeah. the idea. That is the idea. And how how does the the name Captains and Poets Poets weave itself into your work? Like, 
What does it mean to be a captain and a poet? I loved hearing you guys share that. I, I wonder if you could share it with the listeners. Sure. In, in very simple terms, we have these two parts of ourselves. So the captain is the doer, the part of us that goes out into the world and takes charge and and gains confidence through experience, you know, makes decisions and is perhaps bold and adventurous. And the poet is everything stirring inside of us. So our emotions, our imagination, our, our values, our dreams, our aspirations, our creativity. And the idea is that when they work together in partnership, that is how we become our best selves. So the captain sort of nudges the poet, like put up your hand, share that idea, go after mm. that dream, let's set some goals. And the poet is guiding the captain's actions from that place of self-awareness, uh, awareness of others around you and from what's important to you. Oh my goodness, there's so much depth there. Having both those sides, it's amazing. What kind of feedback or um, outcomes are you seeing with the groups that you're working with? And if you could give us some examples of the kinds of schools or educators that you're working with, that would be great. There's been a number of really very cool uh, experiences. Um, in, in the, early on, we started working with 18-year-old boys right off the bat, and they would show up with their hoodies, and they would be like a little bit grumpy to be there doing a workshop, and especially about like feelings and things like that. Um, but um, almost yeah. immediately, we were we introduced the captain and poet. We give them, we told them that everyone has them, so they immediately had permission to access these parts of themselves in front of their peers and beautiful things happened because of that the boys opened up they 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 recognized that you know that the poet side of them was maybe being shut down a little bit uh through school and or through family or and they just haven't had that opportunity but they really wanted to um and then you know, they were natural captains. A lot of them, they, this was a particularly athletic group. So they were, they, they started to realize that they needed to balance it more in order to be really good out in the field. Um, and then they started to talk about how they wish they'd known this earlier and talk about, you know, how they could bring this to the younger kids in their school. And, and so they didn't have to wait until their senior years to be perfect, like be their best selves to, to show who they authentically That's were. So, cool. so there was some really amazing moments uh, in that. Um, there's there's so many. Um, Jennifer, did you want to jump in? Yeah, no, that, that's one of my favorite memories as well. But we've run the program in, in primary schools, um, really trying to foster positive cultures, more inclusive classrooms. Um, we ran at a camp last summer for underserved youth in the US and that was phenomenal. Uh, the kids were introduced to their captain and poet on the day they arrived. And as the camp director told us, normally it takes sort of four days for everybody to gel and, and find their people and really get in the groove. And they said it, it half the time. Um, by, by day two, everybody was, was really thriving and using captain and poet language in all of their activities. And they created some amazing um, sort of culminating uh, projects by the end. Uh, as 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 cabins, so that was really rewarding to see. That's so cool. So you work not only in school settings with, say, eighteen year old boys, but also in multi, you know, boys and girls, different age groups. Do you ever sync up the older kids, like those eighteen year olds that shared with you, with the younger kids? Because I see so much opportunity there. Yeah, we've built out mentoring programs um, for all age groups, actually. So uh, as long, you know, the kids who are like the grade fives and sixes will have an opportunity to mentor some of the primary junior kids. And the same thing happens in the uh, in peer leader uh, groups in high schools. Uh, same thing. We have the peer leaders that run this program with us, and they have this opportunity to internalize and learn some of, uh, uh, you know, some of our, our language so they can take it back to the grade nines. Um, so it's oh, building wow. this whole school culture, right? From kids themselves. It's just beautiful and easy, easy, easy. You just hit, hit the nail on the head for me there. One of the things that really struck me about your work is the importance of building and continuing to nurture culture in learning settings, whether it's a school, whether it's a camp, whether it's a program where kids are learning something, 
being able to go back and use, as you say, Jennifer, the language, the common language and exercises that mix generations or sorry, mix ages uh, is some of the ways that you guys build culture. I would say beyond, you know, the curriculum alignment and the outcomes for the kids, tell me about how you've seen school cultures change as a result of your Captains and Poets programs. Well, every school will bring us in for a slightly different reason, but the truth is that mm. they're all facing the same challenges. There's there's a lot of um, remediation needed around social skills after what we've experienced the past couple of years and obviously the academic. And I think what we're seeing as well is kids are really overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, particularly with the impact of social media. So there is a bit of a passivity that's that's in place now that maybe that languishing, that, that residual languishing. And I, I think what we've forgotten is that we are wired for connection and kids mm -hmm. want to feel empowered. They want to know themselves. They want to thrive. And so there's so much untapped um, potential in kids today. And I think, I think we're all in this state of fatigue and overwhelm and we've forgotten that. So what we're really doing is just helping schools to reignite that and, you know, for teachers, and students to bring a new level of self-awareness um, so that they connect with themselves more deeply first, and then they can connect again, you know, in a strong way with others. And I just wanted to add to that, th that it's, it's not just teachers, it's not just schools, right? This is, this is a, we are trying to engage all key stakeholders across communities. Mm -hmm. So we are, it's teachers, it's students, but it's also like youth organizations, places of worship. It's, 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 it's every but parents biggest audience should be you know parents and so we've built out all of these resources and the workshops to engage teachers to engage principals to engage parents to engage youth account counselors at camps right. um so we've, we've done all of this incredible work so we can take it everywhere so we have a new language that we're building together oh wow and you are taking it everywhere. I mean, you are global now. Tell us some of the places that you are working and seeing people adopt captains and poets into their communities. So we're in six different countries right now. It's so exciting. So we're just, um, we're in Malaysia. We have, uh, we're in England. We are in uh, Costa Rica, United States, Canada, um, we have a team in Dubai. We're getting into Australia very shortly. Um, yeah, so the, it's it's like so exciting because it is a world conversation. We're in we're in all kinds of beautiful uh, global educator networks, and we're and you know we're being published in in Spain very recently. So it's like it's a very exciting time for us as this starts to roll out and get some momentum. And you are speaking as well. I see you pop up all over the place doing speaking engagements and podcasts. So yeah. how do people find you and your work? If, they, if this reaches people in our global education network, how can they find you? You have all these resources, all these ways to engage yeah. culture and ignite thriving communities. How can they find you? We're... I feel like we're everywhere right now, but all our social, every social channel, every social channel at Captains Poets. Of course, okay. we have our website, which is captainsandpoets.com. Uh, LinkedIn, our biggest, you know, one of our biggest tools is LinkedIn. Uh, there's so many amazing people out there doing beautiful, beautiful work that we just hope that right. they find us and, and connect with us and just to start a conversation. And we're trying not to recreate any wheels. We want to work and partner with people that are already doing beautiful work in the in, mm -hmm. in across the world. So we just really encourage that sort of collaboration and partnership. Amazing. And Jennifer, are there any specific people you're looking for that if they're listening, is there anyone you're hunting for or looking for in terms of partners or student ambassadors? Who are you looking for that might reach with this message? Yes. Yes. All of the above. I think um, it's a little bit discouraging when we're working, particularly inside of public systems right now, because there's there is such a state of overwhelm and the needs are growing. So we're really looking for people who are like-minded, who see the importance and value of creating connection, you know, in the learning process. And maybe I go as far as say as before the learning process. Right. 
and um, youth. Like we are looking for youth around the world to carry this message forward in this next generation um, and for them to feel empowered and, and to re recognize that they each have something really unique to bring. Amazing. Well, I have a number of youth in my network. I can't wait to connect them to you. And are there any last words that you want to share with educators or parents um, in being a captain and poet together? Do you have any last words you want to share? Sure. I, guess I think. No, go ahead, Jen. Yeah, we, we have so many words. No, you go ahead first. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, you know, one of our slogans that we use with kids is we are all the same because we are all different. Mm. So, you know, whether that's in your family or in your classroom or in your youth organization, really recognizing that we all are sharing this human experience. We all face trials and tribulations. We all feel vulnerable, you know, putting ourselves out there in the world. Um, so just giving that permission, but at the same time, honoring everyone's uniqueness and really um, enabling them to access what we feel is really the intersection of well-being and identity and, and mm. bringing SEL into this really simple framework that people can carry in their back pockets their whole lives. Carry in your back pocket your whole life. I love that. That is going to be on my billboard. Um, <laughs> thank you both for your incredible energy and vitality in this space. The world needs you and uh, we are looking forward to seeing captains and poets continue to evolve and connect with more people of all ages. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Jan. I'm gonna put all of the links below and Super. you are amazing. Thanks for sharing.